All right, as promised, we're back with a little Vietnam 65 to 75 GMT games. And a lot of people are probably wondering, hey, that's not a scenario I recognize. Well, it's not. Um, I kind of set it up just to practice uh, the rules for operations. And it's, it's just kind of a made up situation here. Um, I accidentally moved these when I had that cover on there. Oh, actually, I'm gonna keep them a hex apart so there does have to be some movement. So I posted a short video uh, a little while ago where I was showing what I was gonna do for this and then I kept reading the rules, etc. And one of the things I was confused about was for the first so uh, Operation Starlight, the first scenario, they tell you to grab a, uh, there's, there's one, 155 millimeter artillery battalion and for the life of me I was sitting there trying to figure out like what the heck is how do I figure out which which counter represents 155 millimeter so I messaged uh, big board gaming old Kev over there through Facebook I said man when you set that up how did you figure out which one was the 155 millimeter and he said, well, I learned the hard way, just like you're learning pretty much. And he said to uh, flip the counter over. So yeah, this is what happens as you get older and you try to play these games. Uh, it's on the back of the counter. So just in case anyone was wondering about that and you probably weren't. All right, so this will be a sample turn. I need to move this. I think I accidentally shifted these up here. Uh, just a little sample uh, search and destroy outside of uh, I don't know how you say this city, this little town. Uh, Vitan, Vitan. Oh man, that's a that's. I'm gonna need an expert to pronounce that one for me. Uh, we're gonna do a sample operation little turn here, and one of the things I realized too was before I set this up, I just had them using interdiction points. In order to use the full interdiction points, you have to make sure that you have a free fire zone. Otherwise, your interdiction points or your air points are, are you're not going to be able to use the full amount. So I'm going to make this a free fire zone, just so I can you know uh, kind of show an example of what I want to do here. So we're going to move this out of the way here, and we have three units here. We have the third marine um, battalion, the fourth marine battalion in here, and with some artillery support. There's one 155 millimeter artillery unit here it has a range of one hex so you can skip a hex all right let's take a look here at what I got set up remember free fire zones all artillery naval and air support function at reduced effectiveness unless there is unless the hex it is being used against is in a region which has been declared a free fire zone uh, each support point only contributes a half a point of strength so what I want to do here is give the allies four air points we're gonna give them four air points. We're gonna have four available because I wanna try uh, interdiction. So we're gonna give that a shot right there. I don't have the rest of the stuff out because this is gonna be just something really basic to help people see how this game plays. And I think I just broke my tripod, but that's okay. It's off of Amazon. All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna declare that a free fire zone because I wanna get the full effect here. And then we're gonna give the VC here now, according to the rules, they have to be this side up so that the other player doesn't know what they are. There is a political section in here. I already know what they are because I set this up. So there is a political section. These kind of work as decoys. They can move, and with this side up, um, you, the other the allied player doesn't know if this is a real unit or not. So they kind of serve the purpose of, like, you, you attack it, and... It's like a decoy and you're like, well, shoot, I just wasted all that movement going after, you know, a dummy, a political section. And then there's a VC unit right there and they have um, intrinsic artillery or, you know, built-in artillery right there, two points. So we're gonna put that right here. Uh, it says the range of units or artillery capacity is noted on their counters. The number of bullets here indicates the number of intervening hexes which the unit can fire across. Units whose artillery strength is not marked with a bullet can use their artillery strength only in their own hexes or in adjacent hexes. Uh, so this one, I believe, the way I read this properly, is it can shoot over one hex and nail this one. The terrain 
And this, this terrain is known as uh, cultivated terrain. And for foot units, it's one movement point. For mechanized, it's four. And the combat die roll modifier, which we'll get to later, is a zero. But there is a note of RF hashtag or RF uh, colon one, which actually I had not actually looked that up prior to this. Uh, something about uh, regional forces, I think, or something like that. Uh, and the artillery here is independent. So I believe that independent artillery can support uh, any operation, uh, as noted on page uh, 20, uh, that's 7.1.2 in your rule book. Independent artillery can support any friendly units regardless of formation or nationality. The operating player independent artillery unit can support only a friendly operation to which it is assigned. So naturally this artillery is going to be uh, supporting the uh, Marine Corps here that I'm going to be using for this operation. Okay. All right, so the first thing in a game turn, you're gonna conduct two of these uh, each season. And then you're gonna have a seasonal interphase where you do the complicated stuff with uh, recruiting and all the political things and stuff like that. So the allied player, that's, that'll be me, will say, uh, I'm gonna indicate available air, air mobile, riverine support on the record sheet and place the corresponding markers on the general record track. Yeah. Okay, like I said here, we're gonna slide this down and we'll pan out just a little bit. I'm going to just uh, give give the allies four points. Okay, I'm just making this up. So air points total, you wanna to put that on the chart. Now this is a, a very Mitchell land looking game. Mitch, if you're out there. Uh, you might recognize a lot of these counters. Look, you're gonna see a Mitchell land feel, next war, silver bayonets. Um, they look a lot alike. So if you're used to those games, the counters are gonna look very familiar to you. Uh, all right, so we're going to put four air points in there. We have four total. When you're doing your operations, the air points operating is uh, how many you're using throughout your operations. So um, I think it goes like that. They actually tell you in the book, but my memory sucks, so I'm going to use these counters the way I. <laughs> it's going to help me remember the most. So, All right, so I'm going to allocate there, and then we're going to go the special operation designation phase. Um, I am not going to mark any units on hold or patrol operations. And we're just going to make the National Liberation Front, the VC, the communists, we're going to make them, I almost said that word, we're going to make them just kind of like a, a dummy force here. I'm not going to give them anything but probably an alert move. And then we go to the operations phase. So what you want to do here is the communist player decides whether he or the allied player will conduct an operation. The indicated operating player then states the type of operation he will conduct. The flow chart is going to go according to what the NLF player wants to do. So you'll be starting here and you'll be like, begin operation is, does the uh, NLF elect to operate? And we're going to say no here and go right to the allies. And yes, I'm going to do an operation. So I'm going to pick uh, search and destroy, not seek and destroy by Metallica. And we're gonna name a target hex. We we got a, some intel that there's a VC, there's some VC uh, gathering force in this hex right outside the, the town here. So we're gonna designate that our target hex. And operating will be uh, these two battalions here. And we've got some air points too. So if you're wondering what the counters, what the counters mean, I'll point that out to you. Um, the ground combat is on the left and the artillery is in the middle. If it, there's any intrinsic artillery, let me zoom in a little bit here. And your movement points are on the right side. And the pursuit modifier is this number right here, this plus three and plus three, very good at pursuit. So it's ground combat, artillery, movement, pursuit. Just remember that. And then you have your unit type and unit size, et cetera, et cetera. And the colors, of course, there's, there's Anzac, uh, Philippines, Thailand, there's a whole bunch of different uh, colors in this game since it does cover the whole war. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, search and destroy. And the allied player is executing a search and destroy. You can roll for rangers to put in, but I'm going to skip that and not use that. I believe the first scenario operation Starlight also skips it. Let me just check. It's kind of loosely based off this scenario, but I just wanted to plop it down in the middle of the board. I'll zoom out for you guys here. Uh, Operation Starlight does say here, 
Um, the allied player cannot declare free fire zones, but we're going to ignore that. This is not just skipping this. It tells you where to set up and what units to put out. And it also says that there's no Arvin Rangers available. There's four replacements. There's four air points. So I did kind of keep that in one air mobile and one cruiser. So uh, I just tweaked it a little bit just to show you guys how this game works a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to put four air points into this operation. So I'm probably doing this backwards, but so I'm going to spend four. So there's zero available. Then I'm using four on the operation and I started with four. I think I probably did that backwards. It's in the book. Uh, I'll have to check that again later. I have to do it this way in order to remember stuff. So um, also you'll notice down here that there are the season track is here. So you have two springs, two summers, two falls, and there is a chance for monsoon weather. Uh, if you're doing the campaign in monsoon weather drops your available points, I think to like 75% or something like that. So it's kind of crazy. Okay, so we're gonna declare that. So the movement segment only applies during search and destroy, clear and secure, and naval transport. So we go to operations phase. All right, operations phase. Each operations phase is kind of broken down into like different segments here. So we kind of, we kind of skipped over the strategic movement. We're gonna go right to here. We're gonna designate it. And we're going to hit support declaration, which I just did. And then there's movement. But we're going to take a look here at the flow chart. You may want to know, so I'm going to try to interdict this hex. And basically, this is going to add movement points for the VC to have to exit out of the hex. And I'll kind of go over how that works uh, right now. So you want to look at... Um, 7.3, I think that is air power, page 21. And we're gonna to go to interdiction here. Uh, if three support points are applied to interdict a given hex, one movement point is added to the cost to leave it. If seven or 14 in an allied non-free fire zone, that's why I made that a free fire zone, uh, additional cost is two. So we're gonna interdict for one extra movement point. I just made this, like I said in my short video, uh, I made this out of uh, some of the blank, I'm gonna move this closer, some of the blank counters that they provided. There's a lot of blanks in here, so I just wrote plus one movement point. It kind of helps me remember what the heck I'm doing too, so. Okay, so we're gonna follow this operation here. So we designate and we go to the operation uh, flow chart. And units ineligible to be assigned for operations are anyone that was on hold or patrol, which we are not doing. And is the NLF operating? No. Is the Allied willing to operate? Yes. Now, if you had said no and the NLF then says no, it actually ends that operation phase. It's definitely not fire on the leak. Uh, so we're going to operate, yes. Allied executes an operation. And we go down here and it's search and destroy. And that's going to bang you over to diagram A. So let me get diagram A real fast. So we go to diagram A, it's an allied only action when it's green, and there's reaction movement, incidental attacks, we're not going to be covering that. NLF action is down here, such as alerts and things like that. So we're going to go here, we designate the operating units, we covered that already. I'm going to move this, try to get this in frame. All right, so the operating units are going to be here. And then is this an allied search and destroy up? It is. And uh, do we roll for rangers? Now, if you want to go over that, it's on page 10.3.2. I'm not doing rangers, so. We're going to go up here and we declare the target hex. Enemy units, if any, in the target hex are the, now the target units. We're going to declare that hex. Declare air naval support. Eh, I can do that now. I should have done that. I did it a little bit earlier, but we're going to put... Um, I guess I don't have to use all my points. Yeah, I do. I had to use three. So let's bring that back. I don't know what good it's going to do to save uh, one point, but let's do that. All right. So we'll use three points. Okay. Operating player may move any of operating units. Now there's a chance for incidental attacks and reaction movement. 
I'm not going to go over reaction movement now, but basically nearby units which aren't doing anything can actually move their full movement allowance. I believe that's basically what it boils down to, but we're not going to worry about that. Rules for uh, zones of control are any unit with a ground combat factor greater than zero exerts a ZOC. So we have um, uh, six. God dang, these guys are good. We have six. It is a regiment, so um, six there. Ugh. So there will be a ZOC. So we're going to move. Uh, this is a foot unit, and you can tell that by looking at your movement chart here. Uh, the little symbols up here will tell you basically if it's foot units or mechanized units. And we're in this foot unit column there. And cultivate is one, so we're going to take the Marine Corps and we're going to go uh, there's seven. Two. Now you can move as a stack. Uh, you have to move the slowest movement factor of the stack, just a heads up. We're going to move in that target hex, and that's going to trigger some things. Just so you know, we're going to go right in like this. Now, only certain units can enter an enemy-occupied target hex and stop. The operating units are some of them, so they're going to move in and stop right there. And this artillery is back here. I'm not moving them. I should correct myself. It's You only pay the one when you exit a zone of control, but you only pay the point when you exit an enemy zone of control. All right, so let's uh, do an alert check for the VC unit and see if they're alerted by the local town populace or whatever and see if they can get out of this hex. So let me move this over. I almost need like a zoom in thing for like a bigger hex for this. I should probably pull something out of another game or something. Um, okay, so alert movement. There is an example of play on page two of the, of the scenario book if you wanna follow along with that. I'm not actually using that, but it, it works well for what we're doing here. So alert movement is covered uh, on page 13 of the rule book, that's 4.8. Um, basically what you do is you roll a die. Uh, a roll of one die is added to the foot movement point cost of the target hex to derive the movement point allowance of the VC units in the target hex. So the foot movement cost of this cultivated is one. So we're gonna take a die and we're gonna roll a D6 and they come in this neat, cute little bag here. Uh, we're going to roll this to see if the VC have enough movement points to get out of this hex. Let's see what I get. Huh, and then, yeah, I got a six. So, he has six movement points. Okay, so the VC player uh, needs to get out. Uh, this allowance might exceed the movement point allowance printed on the counter. It should be noted that if this was an Arvin doing this search and destroy, you add plus one to it because... Uh, the army of uh, South Vietnam was so bad at catching a VC that you, they actually get a bonus when escaping from them. And also uh, North Vietnamese units cannot use alert movement. So we have six points and let's take a look. Now there is, it is interdicted. I should note here that it does cost two movement points to leave an enemy hex. So that's going to be, all right, let me move these guys here. It's gonna get complicated here. So it's gonna be two to get out, and they have six, so four. And then interdiction will be uh, plus one, so it's actually three to get out, well, four to go into here. So I think the furthest they can get is here. And if you want the, let me know if I did that right. I think I did it right. So they start with six, and he's going to send the political uh, section here off in a different direction up to here with that. I think that's legal. My my good die roll really gave me a lot of points to get out of that hex. Um, I wish I had more air power, but I think that's a legal move. Uh, now, keep in mind, if you announce an attack on a political section, it's automatically eliminated, but it is a good decoy marker because now you're like, uh oh, you know, who's what? I think they avoided enemy contact with that alert move. I rolled really well. They may have gotten away. So now we look at our flow chart and we've done, are there VC defenders? We did an alert roll. They can disperse. They did the alert move. Any VC units in the target hex may move. Any hex occupied by a target units after the alert movement is complete is a target hex. So there still are targets. Uh, then we go to here. Are there any target units in adjacent hexes or hexes occupied by operating units? And the answer is no. If clear and secure, operating units may be assigned a patrol or hold. That was not clear or secure. Return to begin operation. 
All right, so then we go all the way back up to, and we keep going. So we're still not complete yet. We're gonna catch those guys. Now I should note that alert movement is only possible uh, during the first round of a search and destroy. All right, so I, uh, one thing I do, I should note is that I should have put, um, uh, this comes off here. I should have put the, there's a little operating counter you can put on there. I just didn't wanna, I just didn't wanna cluttered with a lot of stuff. So I didn't really put that, but you should probably do this. You can say they're operating and then uh, each unit can do one operation. Since these two are both done, oops, we can flip that over and you can put ops complete on top of that stack like that. Now that was pretty uneventful, right? So uh, they got away. I mean, there's not much I can do about that. It was a good roll. So um, if there had been combat, I can cover that in the next video perhaps. But that's kind of an overview of just like one operation. Now, if I had more units on, on the map, I could then go on. What's gonna happen is we're gonna go back to the beginning of operations and uh, does the NLF player wanna operate? And we go back to that all over again. And again, he may say no. And does the allied player want to operate? And since I'm out of things, out of uh, units, I'm going to say no. And then the NLF player will say no, and that'll end our, op our operation phase. And that's pretty much, we do two of those. We do two game turns uh, each season. Then we'll go back to the beginning of the game turn where you do your support, special operations, strategic movement. Then you go into the operations phase again. But let me know if I did that movement right, at least if I counted that up right. That's the tricky part. Um, you know, I don't have anyone to attack as far as I know, so I can't do anything about that. And I should note that interdiction removal takes place here. Um, down at the very end, uh, did, 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 target units, blah, blah, blah. You go through all this stuff, remove interdiction markers here. I believe these come off at the end of the operations phase, since we're both done. I think that comes off. Uh, and so I think that was done properly. Uh, any of you experts out there, let me know. Uh, that's kind of a rough walkthrough. You're learning along with me. So I tried to set that up as easily as possible. And we have one air point left, so obviously we won't be doing too much. You can um, also use air to support attacks which is kind of neat. You can um, do ground support and air points will increase the combat strength of, of friendly force. Uh, each supporting point adds one to the friendly force's combat strength. So I may take that one uh, next time and uh, ha do an airstrike if I'm able to catch the VC units. Um, that alert roll is, that's rough because I'm not really sure how you're supposed to catch if they, if a person keeps rolling well, um, you're eventually gonna run out of uh, units to try to chase these guys. Let me make sure I did that right here. <laughs> During the first round. Okay, I think I did that right. Boy, that sucks. All right, I'm gonna have to come up with something where I can trap them on the coastline or something. All right, let me know your thoughts. I know it was a little bit rough to get through, but you kind of see how this game works. And uh, Lord. Uh, the fact that I even got this far is a miracle. All right, I'll talk to you all later.